What up, what up, everybody? It's a brand new Saturday, a brand new episode of the Mott's West Podcast with yours truly, Mott's. I want to say what's up. Hope y'all had a happy and safe Cinco de Mayo. Hopefully y'all are getting up and uh, clear-headed to listen or watch the podcast. We're now on YouTube. And I just want to take a minute because that is a huge, huge hurdle that um, that I had to overcome with the whole YouTube component. Um, getting that up and going, figuring out the little glitch that was holding the podcast back. So now it's a whole wide world of digital media opened up to me. So I'm definitely going to make use of that. So that's really, really cool. Also, the shirts had an epiphany on the shirts. Um, two years, I guess, in the making. Um, there were shirts that were designed and the original design got messed up again. I've had just the worst luck with laptops being stolen, uh, breaking down on me, what have you. So um, I finally got back in with this new laptop and got into messing with the um, with the design again. And I figured out uh, how to revert it back to the original design logo. Basically, I don't know if you guys would be able to tell the difference, but what, what it was was the original logo was really... Um, sleek and crisp and then after my laptop got stolen I had to redo the design and it was very much the same design it was just the the lines were really rough and and um, <clears throat> uh, just really rough and like uh, drawn in with like a crayon instead of with like you know um, hard edge pens but you, you guys understand what I'm saying it was the lines were really, really um, messed up, um, if you want to say that. And this one, the lines are very, very, like I said, um, streamlined, very crisp. So I'm loving that. So the, the shirts are on their way. The first, I guess, batch of them. So they will be online. I will tell you how to get those next week. And um, also, like I said, with this whole YouTube thing and everything back up and running now and I can actually do the show live like I like to do it as long as I put that little disclaimer there um, I'm thinking I'm probably gonna revisit maybe some guests that I had before some uh, guests that haven't been on yet and I think I'm gonna start out with Vince because he and I are planning to meet up at the end of this month so maybe I'm going to try and with everything up and running like it's supposed to be at full optimum capacity, uh, maybe we could try and get a live episode going to where you guys can just uh, like a live chat where you guys can make comments live and interact with Vince and he possibly will have his wife with him, Sierra. And um, it should be it should be cool. I think he'll go for it. Um, I think we can get it set up and get it done. So, yeah, we're going to go places with this. I also have um, more things to come, so just kind of stay tuned. So with that, I want to get into the top news of the week. The big story of the week was this. Okay, so if you guys remember about a year ago this time, there was a whole lot of stuff going on from the Vince McMahon scandal um there was the whole uh cm punk thing going on in aew mjf after the double or nothing pay-per-view uh, just basically radio silence no one heard from him and his controversial comeback well one of the big stories around this time last year were naomi and then sasha banks walking out of a taping of Raw after WrestleMania. And um, since then, uh, Sasha Banks has reemerged, um, of course, and The Mandalorian has reprising her character this past season, which was great. And also, this past January, showing up at Wrestle Kingdom for New Japan as Mercedes Monet. So she is definitely back. Um, Mercedes has already captured the IWGP women's title and uh, she's been working pretty good in, in, in New Japan but nobody heard or knew what was going to go on with Naomi whose real name is Trinity 
who is the real life wife of blood member Jimmy Uso, whose real name is John. Uh, so we found out uh, this past Thursday where or where she was set to debut, which was Impact Wrestling. So she's going to be in the, I would say, third largest promotion in wrestling on TV today. So you would go WWE, AEW, and then after that you would go uh, Impact Wrestling. So she's going to be on Thursday nights, and we'll get into more detail on that later on in the show. That's, I promise, we'll follow up on because I'm horrible uh, with the follow-up. So with that, let's see... Who is living their best week? Living my best week. <laughs> so, we're going to start off. Like I say, there's wrestling on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So, we break them all down every day of the week. And at the end, I tell you which show is living its living best, week. best week. So, let's start out with Monday. Monday Night Raw, it was night two of the draft, and the basic things you need to know, or the biggest things you need to know, Raw got uh, Rhea Ripley and Seth Rollins, and SmackDown got Charlotte Flair again, and Austin Theory, the U.S. champion. So uh, it should be interesting to see Austin Theory um, having matches with uh, possibly new people that he hasn't um, had rivalries with yet. Also, big news, the Usos were drafted to Raw with uh, the rest of the Bloodline, Solo, uh, the Tribal Chief, and Paul Heyman. So that's going to be interesting. Also, we learned that Brock Lesnar negotiated to be a free agent, meaning he can go to whatever show he wants when he wants. All right, so in the main event, well, actually, there were kind of two main events. You had a... Uh, pre-main event and then you had the actual main event so in the beginning of the show during the draft Paul Heyman was allowed to come out and uh, say a couple things basically saying Roman didn't like people having his name in his mouth talking about the clown talking about the Seth who laughs Seth Rollins and he was gonna have Solo do something about that so a match was set up in the main event for Solo to face Seth Rollins and also a match that was already set up prior was Matt Riddle versus Jimmy Uso. So you go to uh, Matt Riddle versus Jimmy. Uh, his brother Jay is with him, the right hand man. Main event Jay Uso is with him, but um, noticeably or noticeable by his absence is Solo. Solo's not there. So it's basically two versus Riddle and KO and Sami Zayn at ringside. Um, during the match, Sami Zayn and KO kind of pull some um, some some circus tricks. Basically, get uh, main event Jey Uso kicked out of ringside, so he has to go back. So now it's kind of three on one. Uh, Jey Uso, Jimmy Uso, is facing Matt Riddle in the ring, and he's also got KO and Sami Zayn to deal with outside. And they're not going to hesitate. They're going to break the rules just as if they were bad guys to make sure that Matt Riddle won. And sure enough, they did. Uh, the referee had his back turned. Uh, KO took the... Uh, well, Jimmy tried to take the covering off the turnbuckle to expose the metal. And um, Sammy distracted the referee. And uh, KO pretty much uh, put Jimmy's head through the metal exposed from the turnbuckle Matt Riddle got the pin and uh, Jimmy was a little bit of PO'd at what happened with KO and that his BRO was not at ringside with him and I don't mean Jim or Jay I mean uh, Solo so there's that tension building there that Solo wasn't there that he's possibly being used for other things and the Usos are kind of being left in the dust so the main event, Seth Rollins versus Solo, uh, it was it started out one on one, and eventually the match broke down when the Usos attacked Seth Rollins, and the tag team champions KO and Sami Zayn came out to even the odds. So uh, Seth Rollins won that match, 
by disqualification, so that was wrong. So next, we skip Tuesday because NXT, like I said, is boring. It's just got rookies in it. It's not even good anymore. So let's go right to Wednesday and AEW Dynamite. So if you tuned in last week, they're basically doing this whole thing with what's called the four pillars of AEW. Basically, the four young um, next up-and-coming wrestlers, Sammy Guevara, Darby Allen, Jungle Boy Jack Perry, and, of course, NJF. So that's what Double or Nothing, uh, that's going to be held May 28th in Vegas, which yours truly may attend. Um, that's what it's going to be centered around, those four pillars. So the tag team match was to determine whether the main event was going to be Sammy Guevara versus MJF one-on-one, -on -one, where Sammy would basically take MJF's bribe money, lay down for him, MJF goes on to keep his title. Or, if Darby Allen and Jungle Boy won the match, it would turn into a fatal four-way match. So, long story short, you know how wrestling goes. If not, then I don't know what to tell you. But, uh, Sammy, uh, well, not Sammy, but Darby and Jungle Boy defeated Sammy and MJF. So now, the main event is going to be a fatal four-way at Double or Nothing. May 28th, live from Vegas, with which yours truly may be attending. So, Impact. You had the debut of Trinity. She's finally back in wrestling on TV. So, she comes out, makes her debut, and no doubt she's got the huge following and the huge uh, reputation behind her being from WWE. And Deanna Perrazzo, the women's or the knockouts champion, comes out to greet her, but immediately says... If you come for my title, um, you this is something you can't walk out on. And uh, Naomi or Trinity, I'm sorry, responded that um, if you ever face me, I'll make you wish you got fired again. So their shots fired. Then out comes Jordan Grace, who will be uh, who will be Diana Perrazzo's challenger for the title uh, on May 26th. At oh my gosh, I want to say Succession. Not Succession. Rebellion. I want to say. Not Rebellion. Um, Under Siege. Gosh, I'm bad with these promo names. Under Siege, Impact, May 26th. Yeah, it will be Deanna Perrazzo in a rematch with Jordan Grace for the Knockouts Championship. And uh, Jordan basically said, don't worry about Deanna because after May 26th, I'll be the Knockouts Champion and you'll be facing me. Trinity says, no matter who comes out the Knockouts Champion, she'll be waiting so that was Thursday. Friday, you got Rampage first, AEW. And basically, the big match there was the Ultimate Deletion match, which has become a hearty tradition wherever they go, whether it's AEW, TNA. Um, I think they even had one in WWE, I'm pretty sure. But basically, it's a match where they just have this... They have a match, and it's uh, like a movie at their compound because their compound is huge and so they just have a match and they just let everybody just basically run wild and just tell jokes throughout the uh, compound. You probably could see it on YouTube so I advise you to look up the AEW's Hardy Ultimate Deletion match from May 5th. Uh, it was the Hardys, Isaiah Cassidy, and Hook versus Big Bill, Lee Moriarty, all ego Ethan Page and their manager Stokely Hathaway. Uh, that had to have been fun. Uh, in the end, of course, the Hardys and uh, Isaiah and Hook won. So I just would would su highly suggest if you want to be entertained by wrestling and see where wrestling can go, um, I would highly recommend just going to YouTube and looking for it because it's probably there. If not, just watch a replay of the last Rampage. Um, you can probably find that on, um, on TBS or TNT. So, after that, we're going to move to WWE SmackDown. Live from Puerto Rico, they're setting up for, of course, Backlash, which is going to be in hours from now. You might even be watching it, um, as you're listening to this. Uh, so... Basically, the main event came down to Rhea Ripley and Dom versus Rey Mysterio and Zelina Vega. 
and uh, Salida Vega and Rey Mysterio got the drop on Dom and Rhea and uh, the Judgment Day wanted uh, their pound of flesh so they attacked Rey after the match and out comes the LWO with Bad Bunny leading the way to save Rey Mysterio and set up a big match for just a couple hours away at Backlash live from Puerto Rico uh, so that was the week in sports. So let's see who's living their best week. I have to say, with everything that went on last year, it would have to be Trinity's debut in Impact. She and Impact Wrestling is living my best week. And when we come back, we're going to give you the latest on the Rams draft, how the Dodger season's going. And play off LeBron and the Lakers. Hey, it's yours truly, Mots of the Mots West Podcast. Feel free to follow me on social media on the gram at real.m.a.t.t.s or on Twitter at real underscore Mots. Or if you want to drop me a line or want to talk to me about the podcast, have a comment, question, want to talk about advertising on the podcast, that's going to be Podcast at gmail.com. M-A-T-T-S-W-E-S-T podcast at gmail.com. Our coaching did a horrible job. The players did a horrible job. We got our ass kicked. That's the great thing about sports. You play to win. And I don't care if you don't have any wins. All right, y'all, we're back, and it's time for Mott Sports West, where I break down all your L.A. teams and what's going on with them. Let's start off at SoFi with the Rams and how they're doing in their draft. Uh, with the fourth or with their fourth round pick, they finally do select a quarterback out of Georgia, two-time national champion Stetson Bennett. Um, he will or is expected to be a backup for Matthew Stafford, not Matthew Stafford's replacement. Um, but, of course, we know Matthew Stafford um, has been on the uh, worst side of an injury or injuries lately. But um, reports say that he is actually back on the field full practicing, so that's good to hear Matt slinging it again. So um, hopefully Matt can stay uh, healthy for this season. And then maybe groom uh, Stetson for maybe a future start. So that's the Rams. That's basically what's going on with them there. They're just getting ready for um, training camp. The Dodgers, during this past week, um, just kind of uh, started to break away from everything or started to heat up. Had sweeps of both the Cardinals and the Phillies this week but had their first loss in their first game to the Padres last night, 5-2. Uh, they're, they're now 19-14, and 14, which is good enough to uh, propel them to first place in the NL West. So um, good for the Dodgers. They will have a series against the Padres, which are now their rivals because the Padres have gotten good, and the Padres are actually targeting the Dodgers now. Tonight! It is game three of the NBA playoffs. LeBron and the Lakers look to make their home stand versus the Golden State Warriors and Steph Curry. Game one, AD played his off. I can't say enough about AD in game one. In game two, AD was uh, DOA. He was nowhere to be found. LeBron James had a subpar game, so... Uh, Game three at home, the Warriors were not a good away team, so hopefully that comes into play. Hopefully the Lakers can make some adjustments and uh, knock out game three, which, again, starts at 5.30, so you might be actually uh, watching it or um, you might be uh, listening to the podcast as it's going on or after it's over, so uh, who knows? So that's uh, sports. Mott's West Sports, anyway. But I want to know right now, um, what you watching? Now, as you know, 
Um, like I said today, there's a lot of stuff on to watch. I watched, uh, well, I'm going to watch Backlash. Uh, got the Laker Game 3. But last night, went to go see Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. I won't give anything. I won't give any spoilers. It does not disappoint. Um, I would say Marvel is back to making their good uh, standalone movies. Um, that may kind of be a spoiler, maybe not, but I'm gonna just kind of slow up there, slow my roll there. So, I recommend going to see it. And normally, if I go see a movie late, like I did, um, I am prone to falling asleep. So, the movie kept me awake. I'll say that much. And for people that know me, know that I will go to sleep if I watch a movie late. So, if the movie keeps me up, then it had to be pretty darn good. So, that's what I'm watching. What you watching? Hit me up. If you're watching on the YouTube, I actually dropped the um, the apps for the podcast itself. So, if you want to just, you know, at the podcast itself or get at me for advertising, the email for the podcast is there. Uh, and I will fix that promo. So, we're going to try and direct everything toward the podcast social media and um, I'm going to separate my social media, kind of keep it personal and uh, use the podcast uh, social media for the podcast and with that um, I will say this or I have an announcement to make there has um, there has been a huge development in the Mott's West situation and it has a lot to do with travel and like I said in the beginning um, having everything fixed and running at optimum capacity um, at maximum effort means um, I am ready to break up and out and expand the Mott's West Corp Corporation but it will have a lot to do with travel, so you'll have to tune in next week to know exactly what I'm talking about and how you may be able to take advantage. Until then, this is Mats. I'm out.